Hello, Curran here. This video is an introduction to HTML, CSS, and SVG. The target audience for this video is people who are learning about web development and have an interest in graphics and data visualization. And you need to know the basics of these technologies without any libraries or even JavaScript. The topics we'll cover are making shapes and text on the screen using HTML, CSS, and SVG. I saw this figure from the Wikipedia article on HTML5, and it sort of outlines the structure of HTML5 and the various um, sub-specifications. The way this works is it's, it's a standard, where it's like there's a specification for all of these APIs within HTML5, and one of these is the core, which is the HTML syntax that you use to make the HTML pages. And within that, all of these other things are APIs that you can use to um, perform different tasks. Um, this is CSS, which is also part of the HTML5 specification, and SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics, is there as well. As a simplified version of that picture, you can think of HTML, the specification, as encompassing SVG, CSS, and HTML, the syntax, which is actually based off XML. I'm going to talk about each of these three things in some detail with examples, starting off with HTML, Hypertext Markup Language. What we're going to do is build a simple page that is a report of cars that you might want to buy using HTML. And we're going to make a header title and a bolded list of cars. So let's start by making the header title on our page. For this, I'm going to use VizHub. And you can follow along by going to vizhub.com. So once you've signed in, you can click on Create Visualization. And a visualization here is just a, an HTML program really and I'm going to click on this hello world example and then click fork to make a new copy of this that I can modify. I'm going to delete all the files here and start from scratch so that we can explain everything in detail. So I'm going to delete everything in index.html and also everything in the description. The place we need to start is to make a basic HTML document. And the minimal form of that starts with exclamation type doc type HTML. This is the HTML5 um, thing that tells the browser, all right, this is actually an HTML document. Then we start with the HTML tag. This is a tag, the opening tag. And then we also need a closing tag. And the whole content of our page will go inside of, of this HTML tag. There are two tags that go within the top level HTML tag, the first of which is head. So we can say, OK, open head, close head. And the second of which is body, body, not body. Inside the head is where you put things that don't get shown directly, but they sort of set things up. Um, for one example is the title. We can set the title of the page to be something like, you know, HTML cars report. The title is usually what appears in the browser tab if you were to open this as a separate page. In the body is where we put things that get displayed. So we can put just some text in here like hello and you see that it gets displayed over here. One common tag for content is the header tag. We can have an h1 tag, begin h1, end h1, and then inside of this h1 tag we can put a header of the page, like cars report. And by default, it shows up like this, sort of large text and um, sort of bold, uh, the header for some other content. 
All right, we've created our header title with HTML. Next, let's make a bulleted list. In a previous video called Intro to JavaScript in 2018, we coded up this uh, cars report. What I'm going to do is copy this content and paste it into our new document so we can present it as a nice bulleted list. So I'm just going to paste that code right there, that content. And see, this is how it appears. Um, the new lines don't come through. To create a bulleted list, which is what I'd like to do, see, I want each of these to appear as its own bullet point. To create a bulleted list, we can create a UL tag, and then not UL. UL stands for unordered list. Inside of this UL tag, we can put the list items, which is the LI tag. So begin li list item end li and see that gave us a little bullet point right there. So what I'm going to do is just copy this content or rather cut it with control x and then paste it in to this li element and then we've got it there as a bullet. Now I'll do the same for the other list items. Create an li tag not li, and I'm going to make two of these. Copy this content into here, and copy this content into there. I just clean up the white space a little bit. So now we've got our bulleted list. One, two, three bullets. All right, that's it. We're done with our cars report with HTML. We made a header title and a bulleted list. Next up, we can use CSS, Cascading Style Sheets, to add some style to this cars report. By style, what I mean is we can customize the font, and then we can highlight one of these items in our bulleted list, which could be like the car that we're going to buy. Let's start by customizing the font. One thing that's kind of frustrating is that the text here is a little small. so. One thing we can do to customize the font, meaning the, the style of the text, is to make everything bigger. One way we can do that is use the style tag. We can say on the body element, the style equals a quoted string, and in here we can put CSS. This is um, inline CSS. So we could say something like font uh, dash size is two EM. All right, this is bigger. See that? So in CSS, there's a bunch of properties that are sort of built in. There's a huge list somewhere, and I'll just talk about the, the most commonly used ones. And the format is a key, and then a colon, and then some value. And the value usually has units. So when you're talking about font size, EM means um, sort of relative to what the parent would be, or like relative to what it would normally be. There's other units, like you could say 12 point, or 24 point. You can also use pixels as units, but somehow I just like EM. Now, inline styles can really only take you so far because it it sort of conflates the styling with the format of you know what's on the page. So what we can do is I'm going to delete this out of here. I'm going to cut it with Control X, and then make a new file called styles.css, cascading style sheets. And then in here, I'm going to paste that back in. And what we really want is for this to apply to the body element. So what we can do is make a CSS selector. I'm going to type body and then begin curly brace and end curly brace. And then inside of here we can put that expression that we had earlier. Font size is 2EM and then we can put a, a semicolon after it. Alright, so what we've done is made this styles.css file, but it's not doing anything because we haven't loaded it into our index.html page. And loading CSS is usually done in the head so that it evaluates before the body loads and displays. 
To load the CSS file, we can make a new tag here called a link. Link. And this particular type of tag does not need to be closed. It just sort of stands alone. And we can say rel equals stylesheet to tell the page what kind of a link this is. And then we can set the href to be styles.css. And now it loads onto the page. So this is how you can load CSS files into HTML pages. Now that we've got this file, we can sort of expand and make it more, more complicated. So one thing is I don't really like this font uh, because it's a report. I want it to look um, sort of nerdy. So we can set the font family to be, well, I think we can use sans. See, that, that gets rid of the serifs. And to make it look really nerdy, we can use mono, mono space. So now it looks kind of like uh, code or something. And yeah, I kind of like this. Well, I think I'll make it just a little bit bigger. How about 3EM? There we go. Mm -hmm. All right, we've customized the font. Now let's highlight an item. Let's say we've narrowed down our search and we've decided to buy this um, Nissan Leaf here. Uh, rather than selecting on the tag name, which this does, we can select on a class. What I mean by class is that on this li element right here, we can add a new attribute called class. We can say class equals, uh, let's say highlighted. Now that this has a class of highlighted, in our CSS, we can select it using dot. So we type dot highlighted. This is a CSS selector that selects all elements that have the class of highlighted. And so now that we've got that, we can make it look highlighted by, I don't know, let's set the color. Color is red. And see, now our Nissan Leaf is red. All right, we're done with our cars report with CSS. We've customized the font and we've highlighted an item. That's as much detail as I'm gonna go into right now for HTML and CSS. Now, I'd like to talk about SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics. We're gonna make some shapes on the screen with SVG, but first I'd like to talk about SVG as an image format and then we'll do some SVG in HTML, um, where I'll talk about the coordinate system, we make some circles, rectangles, lines, give them different colors, and so on. This is the ghost script tiger. This is one of the earlier images that was created using SVG, and it sort of showed the world, like, what is SVG capable of? What, what, you can, what can you represent with SVG? And I wanna show you this original file. If I open that up, See, we've opened a .svg file, uh, which is an, a format for images. But what makes this different from other image formats is that it encodes each and every shape as a separate thing. See, if we inspect this here, what I did is I clicked right click and then inspect. We can see that actually all of these different teeth are different um, objects. These are G elements, group elements. And within these group elements, these are paths. One path for each tooth. So you can imagine each shape in here, like the eyes, for example, and you know those jagged fur edges, and each whisker, all of these are separate independent shapes that are encoded based on the coordinates of these paths, which is a totally different way of representing images as compared to like JPEGs or PNGs. The overall effect of this is that the image is scalable, meaning no matter how much you zoom in, it's not going to ever get pixelated because the browser is going to render these paths based on these coordinates and it's never going to get uh, blurry or pixelated like raster images do. Contrast that with the PNG version 
of this image, which is a raster image. And a raster image, it's made up of a grid of pixels, and each pixel has its own color. This PNG is defined as, I think, 200 by 200 pixels. So when you zoom in this, it starts to get blurry, and you can see where the image is defined actually in terms of pixels that have different colors, and not in terms of the shapes that are inside of the image. So that's SVG as an image format. It's the concept behind SVG, why it's called scalable vector graphics. Next, let's make some SVG elements in our HTML page. This is where the fun begins. I'm going to fork this example again and create a, a new page where we're gonna put some SVG elements in here. So it's no longer going to be a cars report. I'm going to call this uh, shapes with SVG and CSS. Turns out you can use CSS with SVG. In addition to being a format, like a file format for images, SVG you can actually put inside of HTML using the SVG tag. So begin SVG, end SVG. This is an SVG tag. And in here, SVG has a bunch of uh, custom elements that only make sense inside of the SVG tag. For example, a circle. You can make a circle by saying circle, make a circle tag, begin circle, end circle. And we can specify the radius of the circle with the R attribute. And this is in pixels. So we can say R equals, in quotes, uh, 100 to make it 100 pixel radius and see that it shows up on the screen let me make it a little bit bigger maybe uh, 400 oh we've gone beyond the bounds of our default svg size and um, this is why you should always specify the width and height of an svg element we can set the width using the width attribute and i'll set it to be 960 and then I'll set the height to be 500. These are also in pixels. These are the dimensions that are used commonly on uh, blocks.org, and it's also the default dimensions of the page here in VizHub. And uh, we're getting scroll bars because there's a margin, the default margin on the page. See how that's a little bit down and uh, to the right? We can fix that by adding some CSS on the body I'm going to get rid of what we had before. We can set the margin on the body to be zero pixels. This gets rid of that default margin, and now everything is flush against the corner. And to get rid of these scroll bars, we can say overflow is hidden. There we go, no more scroll bars. So now, now it's just us and this blank canvas on the screen. Back in our index.html, we can specify the coordinates of our circle with um, cx and cy. Uh, but first, note that this circle, the center of the circle, is in the upper left corner of the screen. That's because the default x and y coordinates for circles is uh, 0, 0. And in this coordinate system that SVG and other graphics technologies use, 0, 0 is the upper left. And so as the x coordinate increases, it moves to the right. Let's see that. We can specify cx as the center x coordinate of the circle. We can set that to be, say, 100. And see how the circle moves to the right. And if it's 200, the circle moves even more to the right, or we'll say 400. And um, I think I'll just make this circle smaller, too. So as the x coordinate increases, it moves to the right. And as the y coordinate increases, which is cy, let's say cy is equal to 10. See how the circle moves down a little bit? Or if it's 30 or 40, 50, it moves down, down, down. All right, so I'm just going to position our circle uh, on the left side here, and it's going to stay there. We can add more shapes. Another common SVG shape is a rectangle, which you can create with the rect tag. Rectangles have width, 
let's say I give it a width of uh, 50. And rectangles also have height. And without width and height, you're not going to see any rectangle. So I'll give that 50 as well. See, we've got this black square in the corner. We can position rectangles by using just X and Y. So I'm going to set X to be, say, 100. Move it over to the right. And then I'll set Y to be, let's say, 20, to move it 20 pixels down. I'll just make it 25 so it lines up nicely with our circle. All right, we've got a circle, we've got a square. The default color of things in SVG is black. Uh, but let's add some color. I'm going to copy paste that circle, make a new circle, and then move it uh, down a little bit. Say 100 pixels or 200 pixels or let's say 150. There we go. We can set the fill attribute to set the color of these objects. So let's say fill is red. Boom! Now we've got this red circle. And we can do the same with our rectangle. So I'll make a new rectangle and I'll increase the Y position by 100, so I'll make it 125. And then we can make the color of this fill equals, I don't know, how about green? Alright, red and green. CSS has a number of these strings, or so-called named colors, uh, but you can use hex colors as well. So if you just Google for color picker, there's a ton of color pickers on the web, and so you get this nice interface where you've got this rainbow, and you can say like how bright or how dark it is. So you can use this to pick a color, and then copy this string, and set that to be the fill of whatever shapes that you want. So now we get this nice bright green. And this format is kind of interesting. It's hex encoding where the first two characters represent red, the second two characters represent green, and the third two characters represent blue. And see this is another way of encoding that color, RGB, red, green, blue, as these three numbers, each of which varies between 0 and uh, 256, or maybe 255. We can use that format as well in the fill attribute. I'll just switch it back. Notice how we had to add manually 100 pixels to the Y coordinates of these shapes, but what I really wanted to do is just copy paste these two and then move them both down together. And in fact, this is possible using an element called a group element. So what I'm going to do is, again, copy-paste those two things, circle and rect, but then I'm going to put them inside of a group element, which is the G tag in SVG. So I'm going to make the begin group element there, the end group element down here, and then indent these two lines because they're inside of this group element. The group element is mainly useful because you can apply things to all elements of the group. For example, uh, move them all to a different location. And we can do that using the transform attribute. We can say transform equals translate. And this is sort of a mini language inside of this attribute. Translate looks like a function that takes as input x and y coordinates. So if we translate it 0 in the x direction and then 200 in the y direction, see that? It moved down. All of these shapes moved down by 200 pixels. That's the magic of translating a group element. Everything inside that group element gets translated with it. You can also set the fill on the group element. So let's say fill equals uh, how about blue? And then all of the elements within it get that fill color. Although if they do have their own fill attribute, that overrides the fill attribute of the group. Fill represents the color on the inside of shapes. But there's another attribute called stroke 
that you can use to make a stroke or an outline around shapes. So let's say stroke on everything inside of this group element is black. See now there's a black outline around there. It's hard to see. Let me just make this blue a little lighter. I'm gonna pick I'm gonna pick a light blue. Very light blue. So the fill is this light blue. Now you can see that there's a black outline around these shapes. If we want to control how thick this outline is, we can use another attribute called stroke dash width equals See, I'm just going to set this on the circle, and I'm going to say 5. See, now it's a nice thick outline around that circle. Another shape we can draw with SVG is lines. So we can make a line element, begin line, end line. And lines go from one point to another. And the first point of a line, you can specify with x1 and y1. So I'll say x1 is, I don't know, 200. y1 is also 200. And then the second point of a line, you can specify with x2 and y2. So I'll say x2 is um, 220. And then y2 is also 220. And the line is not showing up because we haven't given it a stroke. It needs to have a stroke in order to be visible. So we can say stroke of this line is black. Now we see this one pixel wide line right here. And we can also set the stroke dash width to be, let's say, 10. Now it's a really thick line. Well, I'll tweak the coordinates a little bit here. That's how you can make a line with SVG. Another common element that you see in SVG are paths. With paths, you can have uh, sort of multiple lines connected together. Or, you know, complex polygons. These can all be represented using paths. So to make a path, we can say path, begin path, end path. And you know what? I'd like this path also to have the same stroke and stroke width as our line. So I think what I'll do is put these both inside of a group element that has that stroke and stroke width so that we don't need to repeat these on all of our elements here. And then I'll indent those because they're both part of this group element. Path elements have this attribute D, and I don't know why it's called D, but you can set D to be a string that encodes the path, and this is a domain-specific language for paths. Uh, one of the sort of commands in this domain-specific language is move to, which is represented by an M. So let's say we want to move to the end of this line which is x2 and y2. So we, let's move to 300 space 280. And it's, this is a representation of coordinates, x of 300 and y of 280. So that gives us our starting point for the path. Another command in this domain-specific language is L, which means line to. It draws a line from where we are to the coordinates that we specify here. So let's say we want to move this to, uh, I don't know, 350 as x and 200 as y. See that? It added this new line segment here. And this is our path that we're looking at. What makes paths really different from lines is that you can have multiple line two statements. After we've moved to these coordinates, 350, 200, we can move again with the L command to some other coordinates like 420 to move up. And notice what happened there. It's actually getting filled in. So if I move a little bit to the left, like let's say 
350, you can really see that this is getting filled in. And this is because the default fill color of paths is black. Just so you can see the fill, I'm going to set the fill attribute on this path. So you can see that, you know, this, this color is where it's getting filled in. Sometimes you want to fill paths and sometimes you don't. Like, I'm not feeling the fill at all right now. So we can specify this special value of none with fill. We can say fill equals none to turn off the fill completely. And I'll just tweak the coordinates a little bit more. Notice the difference in the, the line joints here. This one here, it's actually, you know, this line ends completely and then a new path begins. And so that's why it looks a little jagged. But paths, when you have multiple line two commands, it makes the line ending um, nice and connected like that. And let's add another line two command, like just for fun. I mentioned earlier that CSS applies to SVG elements, and I just want to sort of demonstrate that. So instead of setting the stroke and stroke width in here, I'm going to delete this and then give this group element a class. And I'll say the class will be, uh, how about lines, because th there's lines in here. Then in the CSS, we can select on that class. We can say dot lines, and then open and close curly braces. And then we can specify the stroke and stroke width in here. But this is CSS, so the syntax needs to be a little different. Stroke colon black, semicolon, and then stroke width colon 10. And it works. And just to differentiate the path from the line, what I'm going to do is make the path a different color. And the way that we can select that path is say, all right, within the lines element, uh, we, we want the path. So we can say dot lines space path to select all the path elements that exist inside or as, a, as descendants of the element that has a class of lines. And then here we can set the stroke to be some other color, like, you know, this sort of deep green or bluish color right here. We can say stroke is this color. And see, now you can really see that this path is different. And something cool with paths is you can specify how the line endings look. For this, we can use the stroke dash line join property and we can set it to be let's say round and see after we set it to round it's no longer jagged edges but nice smooth round edges those are all the shapes and properties and attributes i'd like to cover about um, making shapes with svg and css the last thing i want to do is put everything in a group element and make it expand to fill the space here so i'm going to make a group element on the very outside of everything and then indent everything inside that group element and then on that outer group element we can say transform equals and another thing that's available with transform in addition to translate is scale we can say scale it by uh, 1.5 See, now it scales it up to be 1.5 times as large as it was before. And I think I'll just move our lines a little bit to the right by translating them by, uh, let's say, 50 pixels to the right. There we go. That's how you can make shapes on the screen with SVG and CSS. That's all we've got for the introduction to HTML, CSS, and SVG. Hope you got something out of this, and uh, soon we're going to make shapes on the screen that actually mean something. So, thanks for watching. Take care.